Hi everybody, Claudia here with Healthy Preparedness. In this video, I want to teach about activated charcoal and why I feel like activated charcoal is one of the top 10 to 15-ish remedies that we should make sure we have in our home for disaster situations. Activated charcoal, interestingly enough, is pretty similar to bentonite clay. They are able to do um, a lot of the same things. They have a lot of the same benefits. But there are differences between the two. Um, after I create this video specifically about activated charcoal, I will be creating another video where I explain in which circumstances I would prefer to use bentonite clay over activated charcoal. Um, so that, that video is coming. But in this video for now, I want to explain why activated charcoal is such an amazing substance to have in our home, especially for circumstances that we more than likely will be facing during a disaster. Um, wounds are prevalent during a disaster. So is food poisoning, um, you know, just infectious diseases, infections, period, wound, topical infections. Those are all prevalent during a disaster and activated charcoal is an amazing substance that can treat those things. So what is activated charcoal? Activated charcoal is basically a charcoal that is derived from substances such as hardwood or coconut shells, and it's put through an extra oxidative process. After it's done being put through that ox extra oxidative process, it then has a larger surface area and it is a negatively charged substance that attracts positively charged substances to itself. Positive, positively charged substances sounds like it's a good thing, but it's not. Usually all um, toxins such as heavy metals or um, bacteria or viruses or even molds um, are negatively charged, or I'm sorry, are positively charged and they are attracted to things that are negatively charged. So with the activated charcoal, it's able to not only attract those things, but then trap them within its porous surfaces and then you're able to eliminate, eliminate it out of your body. So think of things like infections, some heavy metals such as mercury, uh, viruses, bacteria, even radiation exposure. These are things that activated charcoal can take care of. There are three basic ways that activated charcoal uh, draw substances to itself. Um, sub substances are adsorbed to the outside of the carbon granules. Substances move into the carbon pores. And the third way is substances adsorb to the interior walls of the carbon. So um, activated charcoal just has an amazing ability to draw substances to itself, inside itself, attach those substances to it, and eliminate it from our body. Activated charcoal is known to be one of the most important and effective remedies or treatments that people are using in third world countries, people who can't afford to go to the doctor. Um, they are having miraculous results with it. It's amazing. There's, there's one website that I'll be sharing. Um, the link will be underneath this video that just has story after story. You can look through it. years of stories of people and how they've been using it, not just here within the U.S., but throughout the world, especially in third world countries, including graphic images and the differences that it's made. Activated charcoal has an indefinite shelf life. It's so potent that it's been said that one gram of it, the amount of the size of your fingernail, can absorb enough toxins to fill square footage of four tennis courts. Um, and it's considered safe and effective by the, by the FDA. So all of that is just really neat, interesting information. It's good to know about. So how can activated charcoal be used? Well, it can be used topically and it can be used internally. When we use activated charcoal topically, it has the ability to reduce inflammation, and absorb poisons from your skin caused by different things such as infections or chemicals or insect, insect bites and stings. So I have a list here of things that it can help treat topically. Bee stings, wasp stings, scorpion stings, snake bites, ant bites, spider bites, poison ivy, stinging nettle, wound or cut infections, animal bites, MRSA, eczema, burns, mastitis, cellulitis, pink eye, gangrene, and more. So there's just a lot of issues that it can treat. In fact, my husband had burned his thumb very badly. Um, it was a, a burn bad enough where it blistered. It was really ugly. Um, he, he couldn't move it because it became infected. Um, and we were a bit concerned about it, to say the least. He'd been using the Asporin. He'd even been applying other disinfectants on it. And we just, we knew that it, he'd gone to scout camp and he came home and it just was not looking good. He couldn't move it. Um, and I said, you know what? I think we need to try the activated charcoal. So what we did is we placed a bit of activated charcoal in some water, stirred around, and let him just soak his thumb in it for 20 minutes. Just by doing that alone, 
the the um, blister began to weep and ooze and began, began to relax. You can tell something different was happening, a change was happening. Well, what we did after that was we created an activated charcoal poultice. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But what, how we did that is we just applied, um, we mixed some act activated charcoal with water, added a bit of a thickening agent, which I'll talk about in a little bit, and um, applied that to his wound, um, bandaged it up. We applied saran wrap around it and then bandaged it up. And it was interesting because the next morning he woke up and there was a definite difference. I mean, it, this ugly wound was heading in the complete wrong direction and, it, and we were a little concerned about it. Um, but the next morning he just woke up and wiggled his thumb and said, I think this is working because I can move my thumb now. And he continued to apply the poultice, a fresh poultice, um, for a few days and the wound just completely healed itself. It was rather remarkable to see that happen um, in real life. Um, so. So when creating an activated charcoal poultice, what you'll need is the thickening agent. And there are so many wonderful thickening agents we can use. You can just use only activated charcoal and water and mix that together, but you're having to use quite a bit more of the activated charcoal to get it thick enough that it's not just slipping and sludging all over the place instead of having it stay put where you need the activated charcoal to do its work. Um, so to me, my activated charcoal is super valuable and I would rather try to preserve that or you know, try to save it and not have to use quite as much of it to create that thicker consistency by adding something that will help thicken it up. So right here, these are the options. These are different options that we have as to what we can use for um, thickening up the activated charcoal to create a poultice for wounds, to use it topically. Um, so, of course, there's more outside of this. Think of any sort of thickening agent. It more than likely will work. So we have, over here we have flaxseed, and um, this is flaxseed mill, not whole flaxseeds, but ground up flaxseeds, and that has created a thick consistency. Um, and then we also used bentonite clay. So bentonite clay can be mixed into it to help make it thicker. Um, you can also use something like cornstarch. Cornstarch also helped thicken it up. Um, our arrowroot powder is a great thing to use as well. Um, so is marshmallow root. Marshmallow root thickens it up very nicely. Um, my favorite out of all of these would be the marshmallow root because really you're, you're just having to use a tiny, tiny amount and it thickens up immediately. Like with, with some of these others, like with the flax seed, even the clay, with all of them actually, the cornstarch and the arrowroot powder, um, you have to wait a little bit because, or you have to at least make sure it's a little bit more liquidy than you think like you'd like it to be because it takes a little time for it to thicken up um, over time. So, but with the marshmallow root powder, not only does it thicken up immediately and it's not gonna continue thickening up, um, but it's also very soothing. It's an herb, it's a root, and it's just very soothing and healing in and of itself to the wound. So it's just helping um, the wound or infection or whatever you're treating um, with that. Um, it's just amazing to read some of the stories. You really will have to check out the link that I'll have underneath this. Um, just people who are using it for things like um, brown recluse spider bites and burns and ugly, ugly infectious wounds, ulcers, um, just some of the worst cases of, infe of wound infections uh, you could think of. It's, it's rather remarkable for that. So um, one other way, so, so ways that we can apply the activated charcoal poultice is by either directly applying the poultice itself to the wound or the burn or the bite, whatever, it, whatever the injury is, um, and then wrapping it up with a non-absorbent material such as saran wrap, or, and then just wrapping it up either with fabric or with like an ace bandage. Um, another way that you can do that is by a, making kind of like a compress, an activated charcoal compress, and you just use some sort of material that is porous. So this is chiffon material, but there are other materials, like go to your local grocery store or fabric store and just find a material that's somewhat porous and you can apply the activated charcoal onto the fabric or material, close it up, and then apply that directly onto the wound or injury and wrap it up the same way with saran wrap and then with an ace bandage wrap or with some material. Uh, Cheesecloth is another option for that or even using something like a nonstick pad, like a nonstick band-aid pad, um, take out the cotton material that's on the inside and fill that up with activated charcoal, apply that onto a wound and wrap it up. 
Um, with any wound, you have to reapply the bandages again and again. It's not like you can take activated charcoal poultice, apply it on there, and leave it on for days at a time and think that that's going to do all the work. It needs to be refreshed. You need to clean it off. Um, you need to reapply a new batch of the poultice and so that it can be even more effective, draw out more, and so that infection doesn't develop. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's, I really truly just feel like activated charcoal will be such a huge blessing to those who have it and understand how to use it. Now, I will have, I mean, in my book, Beyond Weight and Weeds, for those of you who are familiar with it, you know that I talk a lot about activated charcoal there and how to use that in all sorts of different um, situations, whether it's wounds or infectious diseases, um, so on and so forth. But um, I will also create a PDF link, an extra, just something extra that really just focuses on activated charcoal, where I talk about how to use it for all sorts of different ailments and um, how to, how much of these thickeners, thickening agents to use in certain, just, just the recipes for all these basically. Um, but really it's not like we need a recipe because it is rather simple. Um, you just need that activated charcoal, add enough water, add a little bit of a thickening agent to create at least some thick consistency so it stays put. Um, but I will have that PDF link underneath this video as well, whether you're watching this from my blog or whether you're watching this from um, YouTube. So let's talk about taking activated charcoal internally now. Activated charcoal, when taken internally, has the ability to bind toxins or pathogens to itself and we are then able to eliminate it through our stool. Uh, different ways that we can or reasons why we would want to take it internally are for issues such as emergency toxin removal. So if somebody is taking some sort of poison, and of course these are all situations where we can't call 911, we're in a disaster situation, that isn't available to us, what can we do? These are the outside options outside of that. Of course, if we have some sort of really bad wound or infection, um, et cetera, we will want to call 911, we will want to go to the doctor. But if we don't have that, well, let's consider taking activated charcoal. So emergency toxin removal, heavy metals, radiation exposure, bacteria-related food poisoning, gas, diarrhea, high or low blood pressure, lowering cholesterol, colic, flu, hepatitis, mastitis, bloating, jaundice, ruptured appendix, cavities, cellulitis, body pain, sore throat, constipation, acid reflux, and more. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a neat thing that can be used for all kinds of things. Like I said in the PDF link that I'll have underneath this, I'm gonna address each one of those. How can we take activated charcoal for all of those? I suggest that you print that off and put it either in your Beyond, and Weed, we, Beyond Weed and Weeds book or next to it in your home storage somewhere. Um, so how do we take it internally? We simply can stir activated charcoal into some water. So usually, the amount that we'd want to stir into there is about um, a teaspoon to a tablespoon, um, depending on the circumstance. And we just stir it up in there and drink it down. It's very dark, um, but it doesn't have much of a taste at all. It's a little, little granular as you drink it, but it, that's not bad either. Um, another way to take it internally is by putting it in capsules and usually taking about three, Mm, it depends, three to five capsules at a time, a few times a day, depending on what you're using it for. Um, there has been some talk about uh, if you use activated charcoal, that it will deplete the nutrients in your body, and that still is to be debated. So, um, But really, that's just for taking it long term. If a person wants to do a constant cleansing or detoxing by taking something that does help draw out pathogens, I would definitely recommend doing the bentonite clay for that. But like I said, I have another video where I'll be talking about, you know, the comparisons of activated charcoal and bentonite clay and when to use which one in certain circumstances. So one last way that we can use activated charcoal is by purifying water with it. Um, activated charcoal, interestingly enough, is used for all kinds of water filtration systems. And we can use it as well if we need to make some sort of makeshift water filtration system. There, um, in the PDF link, I'll have instructions for that as well. Um, on how to do that. Um, so the question comes up, can we make our own activated charcoal? Um, yes, we can in a way. I've looked at lots of instructional videos and there is a um, substance that you need to buy to help you make that and it's a little bit of a tedious process. I personally am choosing just to buy the activated charcoal in bulk and have a bunch stored. Um, could we just use regular charcoal without having the activated 
process or the extra oxidative process having been done to it? Yeah, I think we actually can, but it definitely won't be as effective as activated charcoal. Um, the places that I like to get my activated charcoal from are basically the any best price online that is food grade activated charcoal. And the two substances that I like to make sure that it came from is hardwood or the coconut shells. So those are just my two favorite ones that I like. Um, so I'll have some links down below as well, down below the video, as to where you can get the activated charcoal. More Than Live is one of them, Star Wars Botanicals is one of them. Um, it usually comes in a, Star Wars Botanicals sends it in a big bag like this, it's double bagged, which is rather nice, because it is a really light powdery substance that can get pretty messy, and you do want to be careful with it. As with any substance that draws or pulls um, toxins or binds other substances to itself, you don't want to take it along with any prescription medications or even herbal um, medications or anything like that because it might absorb some of that as well and you won't be getting, um, and those just won't be as effective. So I think that's one of the side effects that we need to be careful about when taking activated charcoal. But all in all, other than that, um, it really is just an amazing substance that will be a great blessing to us should we have it on hand for the ugliest of um, infected wounds and also internal issues as well. So I hope this information will be a blessing to you. Remember that that PDF link will be underneath it along with some other links as to where you can get it and where you can read some pretty amazing stories about it. So thank you for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.